In this video, I wanna show you the core concepts and the best way that you can optimize your Google search campaigns in 2026. Right now, there are well over 75 different individual optimization actions that you could complete inside of Google Ads for your search campaigns. But the good news is, despite all of those individual optimization actions that you could do, we can break them into four core actions that you can use in order to increase the performance of your Google search campaigns. So in this video, I'm gonna be taking you through an optimization method, which I call the STAB method. And rather than me just talking about it, we're gonna jump into a screen share so I can show you to you in a really, really practical way. But before we get into that screen share, so I can help you the most with your Google Ads campaigns throughout 2026, if you follow the link in the description below, you're gonna get access to a product which we call Start and Scale, which gives you access to my Google Ads optimization checklist. And it's not only for search campaigns, it's also for shopping, performance max, video display, and even demand gen campaigns. On top of that, you also get access to Google Ads Optimized, which includes videos showing you how to complete all these optimization actions, and you also get all of my campaign setup guides. So it's everything that you need to not only start, but also scale with Google Ads in 2026. But with all that said, let's get straight into that screen share so that we can take you through how to correctly optimize your Google Ads search campaigns in 2026. All right, but before I take you through the Google Ads optimization checklist, and we'll also go into a Google Ads account so I can show you some real life optimizations, I do wanna just take you through this Google Ads success loop because it's important to note that this is what we're wanting to achieve with Google Ads and optimizing your account. So the first thing is you need to discover what's working and what's not working. And the way that you do that is that you need to look at your data, find out you know some areas that are not performing well, then you wanna go in and add in some optimizations and that's the whole purpose of optimizing your account. Find out what's not working and add in some optimizations to change that. Or if you find an area that is working, look to potentially put more budget in there to get better results. And this is the most important thing and this is what I really wanna really focus on is that wait, you need to wait and give your optimizations time. With Google Ads, you do not need to be going in and making optimizations every single day. In most cases, I'll generally do one, sometimes we'll do two, depending on the size of the account, optimization sessions a week, because you need to make sure that you're seeing enough data that you can actually review, make optimizations, then you need to wait again so you can go through and do that extra reviews. All right, optimization checklist. Now, this is what I was talking about. We've got you know search, shopping, performance max, demand gen, display, and video. I wanna focus in on search today. And this is this stab method that I wanna talk you through. So S stands for your spending and segmentation. T stands for your targeting. A stands for your ads and landing pages and B start stands for your bidding. For this video, we won't go too much into bidding and the reason for that is because we've got another video on this series which deals with bidding. Because smart bidding is such a big topic, we just wanted to do a whole video for that. So we'll focus on the first three, STA, spending, targeting, and also your ads and your landing pages. All right, spending and segmentation. What we wanna do here is we wanna find out are there any campaigns that are ready to scale? And what we mean by that is that do they have good conversion metrics but a low search impression share? Or are there any campaigns that need extra optimizations? Also too, are there any ad groups that need to be moved into a separate campaign? Now the reason for why you would do that is if you've got, say for example, five ad groups and two of those ad groups, are, they're getting some conversions but Google is just not spending any money on them. This can happen really, really common. Uh, that's why a lot of our campaigns now don't have more than three ad groups. Just because we're finding if we put too many ad groups through into a campaign, you end up getting some ad groups that just get no spend at all. So let me just break this down. So the first First thing about your, if you're not seeing your search impression share, if you go to columns, and we're gonna add in search impression share. So what we're looking at in through here, let's just go with this campaign here, I'm gonna highlight here, and I'm gonna move this back to the, we're gonna go back to the last two months. We can see here our search impression share is only at 11%. With Google, if you're ever unsure about anything, if you just roll your cursor or your mouse over the column title, it pops up and lets you know what search impression share is. Ultimately, what search impression share is, the way that I like to explain it, is that for every 100 searches, if you've got a search impression share of 11, that means that you're only appearing on any every 11 out of 100 searches. So that lets us know that we've got some potential to spend more money. So what you do here is if you're seeing that you're happy with this conversion metrics, and for this one, it actually is because they need a cost per conversion of $50, and this is at under 42. This is a campaign that we could go through and increase the budget in, and that's one of the first optimizations. So 
reviewing campaigns that are ready to scale. Now I wanna go through the second one. Are there any ad groups that need to be moved into a separate campaign? So let me just show you this account now. Previously, it was targeting all of US and it's got two core products, which are these two products up the top here. But what we found with this second product, which is their main product, when we had it all inside of the USA, there were some states that just weren't getting enough spend. And I wanna show you the reason for why that was happening. So these are the other campaigns that we broke them out from this main campaign into their own state-based campaigns. And the reason for that really came down to the CPC. So you can see here, we've got like California, the CPC is $6, but in New York, it's $8. Some other states like Indiana, it's $5. So by breaking this out into locations is that allowed us to put more money into where we want to do it because now we've got different budgets set at the campaign level, which is very much allowing us to control the spend. Now in this account, we've done it by states, but you could do it by products. You could have 10 different core products or 10 different core services, and it may make sense to to break them out into like five campaigns or three campaigns, depending on how you wanna do it. There's nothing wrong with starting with one campaign with multiple ad groups. Then when you get the data, you can start breaking it out. But what you really wanna be thinking about is what levers or what control do you want in the business? That's the spending and segmentation. Now targeting, we're gonna really focus on keyword targeting. Remembering here is that with Google Ads, targeting is not only keywords, it's also your audiences or see your locations, or see your devices, and or see your demographics. It is important to note though, with your audience segments, for some of you who may have been running Google Ads for a while, you would know this thing that we would do a lot of bid adjustments. It's really important to note that if you're using smart bidding, you don't need to do bid adjustments at all because smart bidding overrides those. For that reason, because all of these campaigns are on smart bidding, we're very much gonna be focusing on keywords. I just wanna go inside of one ad group. And with this ad group, at the moment, we've just got two broad match keywords. This is a newer campaign. If I go to one that's a little bit more established, you can see here that we've got some exact match keywords. This was an older account that did have some phrase match where we're wanting to phase them out and really focus on some broad match and then a couple of exact match keywords. But the main action you can do here is you wanna go into what's called your insights and reports and you wanna go into your search terms and this is all about adding in your negative keywords. And what you wanna do through here is you wanna review any of these keywords and look to add them as a negative keyword. Let me show you the process and then let me explain why and when you would do it. Process is quite simple. Select and then you go through and add that as a negative keyword. When it comes to adding in, especially if you're using smart bidding and broad match keywords, when I do this, we'll go, we usually do this once a week, we'll go to the last seven days. I'll very much focus on where we're spending the most amount of money. So I don't scroll down all the way to the end and go through these obscure search terms, which have only got one potential impression. When it comes to optimizing your account, what I want you to think about, you wanna follow the money. Where are you spending the most amount of money? Because that's gonna be the big, biggest opportunity to make the change. And what we're really looking at is ones where we're spending you know a significant amount of money so we're looking over this period these top keywords you know we'd be spending you know twenty seven dollars forty dollars still not large amounts of money but I so really only look at the top five or ten search terms where we're spending money and if any of those are, uh, are for themes that we know look they just will not convert or they could be for service that or product that you don't offer that's when you'd add it in as a negative keyword it's not about stuffing your account with as many negative keywords as possible it's more about taking out the things which you know are not going to convert. All right, so obviously I'm just going to show you a couple of things in each one because if you follow that link in the description below, you can get full access to the course which takes you through how to complete all of these individual actions. All right, so let's now jump into ads and landing pages and I want to show you the main thing that we can do through here. So if you go into your ads, we're just on one ad group here. There's actually now two ways that you can go through and do this. Is that you can actually run two separate ads inside of your ad group, but we are now moving over to just viewing the individual asset details. We're in a process of change. But let's just go through these two different ads. And what we'd look through here is that when you're running these ad tests, you wanna make sure that these ads only have one core difference between them. So that way you know exactly what is making that change. And it could be that this top headline has keyword or location insertion pinned in position one, whereas the other ad doesn't, or the other ad might have a different call to action pinned in position two. But what we're looking at in through here is when we look at these two ads, we really wanna be focusing in on the conversion metrics, and we can see that this one is a clear winner. So you've got a conversion rate of 15.5% versus nine, cost per conversion, $40 versus 93. So what we would do, as long as we felt like we had enough data, we don't feel like we've got enough data, we can just keep the test running. You would pause that ad and then create another ad. But now, and this option is that you can actually go and click on view asset details, and and you can see from here, we can do the same process. I can add a filter, so 
what you can even do here is you can go asset type we want to go headline or you could go for your descriptions but we'll just do headline and what you can do through here you're doing the same process but the good thing is now that Google is giving us this key data all at the headline level so what we'd go through here is that if we go for once again anything that is getting a lot of data through here or a lot of spend and not getting any conversions these bottom three the sub effectively what I look to do is from the bottom five forming we would go through and replace them inside of this playlist as well remember if you go through and watch the ad copy video I talk more about how we structure our ad groups and we use a 30% rule for different types of headlines but as I said that's going to be in the ad copy video that we've got in this series as well all right now as I said if you want to see all those actions that you need to complete for optimizing your Google search campaigns make sure you follow that link in the description below so you can get access to my optimization checklist and also that product with all of the videos on how to complete every action on that checklist and that not only covers your search campaigns but also shopping performance max video demand gen and also display now remember that this video is part of my get Google ready playlist and if you want to make sure that you don't miss out any of these videos as they go live go through and not only subscribe but turn on that notification bell and you can watch all the videos that have been released right now through this playlist and remember I said that I would show you where you can watch a video about ad copy and how we structure our ads inside of Google search campaigns go through and watch this video right here see you next time